Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong and welcome to the Back Office Teardown Lab. You might recognise this Citizen TV I bought from a car boot sale not that long ago, but Billy Sarsted has sent me this um, and it's massive uh, power supply. This is a Casio uh, LCD pocket television and I think this is an earlier one because I had um, a Casio pocket LCD color television and I remember them being smaller. I think they might even been smaller than this. I had a couple to be honest with you, but I like the look of this. I'm looking at an angle. It's got looks appears to have a kind of quite nice TFT, but interestingly enough, they do have a similar sort of color turny wheel adjustment, but look at that. It's, this is definitely a nice heavier built unit, really chunky antenna missing a little kickstand, but that's no biggie is it? It's no biggie. It's no biggie, especially it's very difficult to use anything like this these days uh, because we don't broadcast the sort of frequencies anymore. But you've got off and UHF, so it doesn't do the VHF apparently that the uh, Citizen does, but then you have the volume and brightness, external antenna, which is nice. Oh, that also has external antenna. So they must have been pretty much clones of each other. They were all playing in the same market at the time. Weight-wise, without batteries, they're not actually too dissimilar. Um, Despite the bulk, it's probably got a little bit more air inside. But I'm going to put the Citizen 1 aside. We're not playing with that today. We're playing with this. And I'm going to have to get some batteries out, aren't I? Because, no, actually I do. I have some batteries here. Because we're going to have to fire it up and see what it does. Now I might just do a quick tear down of this one. Um, but Biddy says there is an issue with this, an actual genuine issue. So we're going to try to resolve that. And he says, I think it was, that it works on batteries but not on the power supply, if I've got that the right way round. Mm, oh yes, no, maybe. I'm seeing something on the screen. Um, I'll shut down some of the lights. I can certainly see something appearing. Tuning. Put the volume up. Not hearing anything. But then maybe this uh, had a, a sort of attenuates the, the, the volume sound until it's tuned in. Now if you notice on the right hand side there's a little tuny doodad and it's moving around trying to find a channel. And this was the problem we had last time because of course I didn't have... Oh actually I just noticed there is a setting between off and UHF so perhaps it does do the VHF band. So it's searching for a channel. It certainly works that way. We're going to say it works. We know we're not looking at a picture right now. We'll worry about actually making pictures appear on these <laughs> later. Now we're going to take the power supply and we're going to see what's going on with that. If that seems to be the issue. So we'll take the batteries out. <sighs> I don't know why I give a little blow in the battery bay. It's sort of typical really. I do just like to give a little blow. A little puff of air. Make sure it's all happy. So this is the power supply plugged in, but before we plug it into anything, I'm going to take our voltmeter and we're going to measure. Bet it's a centre negative. So many things seem to be centre negative back in that dear. So it's doing a um, 5 volts. It's saying minus because I've got the positive probe in the centre point, but it's doing us a 5 volts. Um, and it's about right because it should be, so it's output 6 volts, centre negative. That's what's written on there, so good. So it goes in here as so and nada nothing nothing at all now is that because it's not quite getting the voltage I don't think it is but I'm just going to double check now I've got the probes the right way around as well mm -hmm. 5.95 I think that's pretty good so it is it is definitely got the voltage up there so whatever is the problem it's something more mysterious and uh, that means we're going to have to dig in under the hood. First things first though, I think I'm going to find something like this envelope, my envelope of randomness. I can't remember what I was drawing there, demonstrating something on that envelope, but that will jiffy bag will sort of give it a bit of a smoother texture to work with. Ah, oh, look, I mashed that already, bugger. Just going to look through the uh, pile of infinite screwdrivers to see what we can do before I you know, well and truly destroy that screwdriver head. In fact, I'm going, I'm going deep now, deep into the back office shelves to get out our quality set of, uh, you know, Rolson style 
screwdrivers. Just just check that one. Mm, yeah, I would have preferred not to slightly mash that head. When I say mash it, it's it's not it's mashed. It's just slightly marked. I have to get a black pen now and sort of unmark that. Mm! Crikey! That is. I think I'm going to damage that getting that bloody thing out. Um, going to switch up to yet a, a larger size Phillips, and this could be it could be uh, game over already, guys. Because oh yeah, mm, that is severe talk. That is severe talk. Damn it. Casio, what were you doing? What the hell were you putting them in? It's just a machine screw at the end of the day. Look at it. But that is put in with a massive amount of torque. Um, and the head is still pretty intact. Thank gosh. Phew. Ah, I need to catch my breath now. That's fine. That was a bit of a worry, wasn't it? The reason it would have been game over, because I don't think I'd have been prepared mentally to destroy it, to just get this thing open, because course if you're going to use it you could just use it off batteries and if you wanted to use a, a bench sort of power supply you could jury rig something up via the battery bay so morally I'd have no reason to destroy this just to get that in there because it's not not as if it's totally broken so Casio model TV 1400 I wonder if this is a, an Argos catalogue special it'd be interesting to have a look in one of those old Argos catalogues and um, Probably, if you're into that, have a look at Nostalgia Nerd's channel. He is, he has the occasional series of going through some of the old uh, Argos catalogues. And we'll get the antenna out. There you go. That's the antenna straight out. Again, it's very similar to the uh, Citizen uh, thing. And it's also quite neat because you could imagine that you could actually make something here if you had these sort of semi-fitted into a vehicle or something rather than using the little external antenna port you could actually have something hard built that you plug in and screw in and that would be a permanent fixture um, yes yeah, so his series he goes through uh, a lot of the old uh, catalogues and things and just sort of flicks the pages like we used to do when we were kids dreaming of what we were gonna buy the Argos catalog was a staple in our household and uh, I probably Let's be honest, I probably read it most in the in the loo. I think we all must have done a bit of Argos hunting in the loo. Um, flicking through. Probably looking at the watches. I do remember as a, as a lad, we were always quite obsessed with watches. And that was that was the, uh, the digital watch, of course, was the uh, big thing. And the more features, the more functions, the chunkier it was, the better. I, uh, and Casio was probably the king, the king of the watches, really. And I, d I don't really know what's happened to them. They, they don't seem to be um, doing that sort of thing anymore. Now, just, you can see I'm just sort of being ginger with this. It's not coming apart as nicely as the Citizen. And the reason is it, it does have PCBs on both sides of the actual um, casing. So there's a big danger there of knackering it out. And I've got a very knackered spludger here, but I'm just going to be reforming it and using this kind of blunt scalpel knife blade um, for my own purposes here. So that's quite nice. If you've got some of these spludgers and they're made of um, sometimes, <laughs> not always, uh, glass reinforced plastic, that those will be the expensive kind. Oh, sorry, just noticed something. Got a little washer there. Put that aside. That was a washer for antenna. Um, you've got some chance of reshaping them. So I'm just going to very gently try to just probe some of these. Just put a bit of pressure. I know, I'm pretty confident there's a bloody... There we go. <laughs> we got it. We got it. Oh, it's got rust in it. <laughs> ooh, 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 ooh. I don't like those sounds, those sort of creaking and cracking sounds, but there oh, we go. That's it. <laughs> so we've got a ribbon cable and a few big old things going from one side to the other. Just going to see if I can get that ribbon cable out. This is definitely older technology than the uh, Citizen, but effectively the same thing. So you've got your cold cathode tubes here. I, say, I keep saying that. Fluorescent tubes. They are cold cathode tubes. 
you've got a, a power supply here looking like a driver this will be a high tension driver there but, ah, a million volts uh, not a million but you know significant voltage to drive those get them energized and you've got your tuner is under here all your tuning technology is under here straight to the panel really then you've got your input to say all the tuning but look this looks a lot like a demodulator stage this will be your driver probably for your screen and this will be your tuner let's let's settle at that we think i think that's about right it's good enough for me and we see a few kind of a little bit fatty fatty looking caps there so it could be these caps are what's uh, what's causing us a bit of mischief and uh, what i can do and i'm going to be I'm probably going to just undo this because we don't really want to mess with that high tension side oh there's another wire what's that one for probably maybe the speaker or something we'll leave that alone though we we'll leave that one what i want to do is just get our power here hooked in i'm just going to turn it off so we've got the power going into here that's the first bit and we're just going to have a look with our meter just to see what we can see i mean that's what more can we do at this point not much so we've oh hang on a minute hang on a cotton pick a minute what's this loose wire what is that thing oh it doesn't look like a loose wire but actually it's it's seems to be a connector to a ground thought that was going to be an easy fix for us but alas no so i'm just going to zoom in a bit more it's <laughs> it's for my benefit as much as yours my uh, camera serves as a little as a microscope for my poor old eyes so we've got a plus here let's put the meter on the plus and then a meter on the ground you can see here this groundy thing not seeing anything let's try here no what did we say it was it was center negative wasn't it center negative so we should be seeing a power between here and here still the volts are are being elusive let's turn it there I'm just going to attack here this side of the jack if we don't get something between these two i'd be most most surprised and really we're not i think the problem the problem might just lie in this jack it could be that simple so if that's the case what i'm going to do is just get a little bit further we're going to just remove this this cable from here it's been nicely stuck down I do apologize to whoever made this in the casio factory they did an okay job sticking that down did not want to to release there i'm going to give it a little shake anything falls out no no dusts um so it looks like we have a DC jack here that's basically dead or poorly and it's very very difficult to see in there. I really need to get an LED on a bit of um, on a bit of wire to act as a torch and what's really ironic at work we made loads of uh, LED pens so a pen with an LED on the end for doing that and we give them to all the customers and we never keep any ourselves so I'm just going to look here you might not be able to see this I'm pretty sure you won't because I'm, I'm 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 looking at it right now. I mean, it looks okay. I can see the the um, the piece that should be in there, that foil. But I'm just wondering if if it's potentially a bit um, corroded. Um, um, there's a sanity check now as well. Let me just have that last quick double check of this thing here. Yeah, there's definitely five volts there. Um, let's give it a little bit of a. I feel it's got a decent bite to it too. Give it a little wiggle. I'm going to probe this board a little bit more. You should be really seeing power somewhere here. I'm not seeing on those pins. How very odd. Now I'm not sure if there's a contact underneath that jack at all. I mean that's also a possibility. But look, we have some test points here plus and minus I mean some of these are all going to be to do with the battery but I don't think there's any complicated circuitry here that's going to be conditioning this I think the jack will just be kind of coming in to the battery and the battery will be isolated via diode so this is a battery wire very thin actually as well which is interesting um, yeah I think we're gonna to have to take that board out I don't think we have to, I think we're going to, 
the um, the reason being, I think the jack could be the, the, the culprit here in terms of just being dirty, but I kind of want to see what's underneath. That's that's really the main reason I'm taking this out. My main idea would have been to put some some sort of abrasive on the end of the existing jack, like a bit of uh, maybe car bodywork rubbing compound, and um, put it in there and just swizzle it around. Just seeing if we need to probably remove that color level adjuster here because that's got the danger of pulling that cap off. Interestingly enough though, I can see a secondary adjustment here on the board. I wonder what that would have been for. It's not on the PCB, but it's in the enclosure, so maybe you could have just... Whoa! Let's catch that before it runs away. Got it. Um, next to there could have been something on another model. So the tricky bit here, we've got one battery spring to push out. Almost. And some broken bit there. Put the broken bit. We'll keep the broken bit just in case we find out where it's broken from. And the battery spring has a little detent catching it, so we just need to lift that. I'm going to risk stabbing the tip of my finger with this. But it will. It's going to do the trick. Here we go. So let's see what we can see. So that there's a shield contact. That's what that thing is there. But that thing that I thought was a loose wire is a shield contact. Mm, look at those old school electronics. Lots of chips. Oki, Mitsubishi, another Mitsubishi. Right, so there's our jack again. Now we've got a better opportunity to really have a little proby probe. Oop, <laughs> hang on. It's here, not there. Don't probe that one. Don't try to shove it in there. You'll do a mischief. Put us on vaults again. We are on vaults. Let's have a look. Come on, I'd like to see something. If nothing on the other side of the board. <gasps> there we go, minus six volts. We are getting the six volts. Phew. So let's see if we can work this out now. So we've got a positive and a negative. Let's see. So this is the power coming down this trace, and then this is the negative. Hang on. It does look like maybe a broken trace there. Let's just check for continuity. I don't think it is, but let's just check. It's definitely looking a bit dicey. Hello. Okay, now we really do need to zoom in and have a look at that. Right there. Between those two, hmm, I think we have a damaged trace. It just looks like, you see there, I don't know if you can see it. The edge of my blade, it just looks like it's such a sharp edge that it looks like it's just a discontinued trace. And if I rub it gently, I can see the board has milling around here to show that this is disconnected but there's no milling around this thing in its entirety so I think it's just there. I wonder if it's mechanical. It is mechanical, look. It was a mechanical failure. Absolutely wonderful. We can fix this and we can fix it now. Brilliant. Well, I was expecting a lot of uh, heartache on this bad boy but that is good. That is a good outcome. I'm pretty sure we can do that. Now, oh, I almost dropped our pile of screws though. That would have been a bad outcome. Now, there is one risk, you see. If I attach that to that in a solid fashion, it means any mechanical stress on this connector is gonna put stress on this component. However, I don't think I've got really too much choice. And I don't think we, it's gonna have that use that it would have once had as a, as a normal TV when TV used to, you know, broadcast on these frequencies. So it doesn't broadcast on these frequencies. So I think I'm going to be safe enough. And I don't think there's too much risk in uh, in actually finding a replacement for some of these components anyway, if, if necessary. I don't really know what that is. It looks could be a resistor if it's 701. Could that be a 700 ohm resistor or is it like a diode? It's a big old odd looking thing. There's another one down here. 
and I shouldn't be like touching things. I'm just aware that this is actually a live circuit and I'm touching it with metal things. Anyway, it's okay. The circuit is not made until I make this joint. It's unplugged now though, don't worry. So I'm just gonna build up the solder really between these two parts. And that's it. That was probably my repair. And if I go and try to move it around, yeah, mechanically it's not doing anything. But while we're here, why don't we just touch up these as well? Let's let's give it a little spruce. And I'm just sort of hold, holding it on there for just a few moments just to make sure that it's nicely heated through the whole connector. And there we go. That could be the fix. That could be the fix. So reassembly, I think it's just the reverse of the disassembly. Hopefully, if I haven't been too um, heavy handed or ham fisted or other, you know, descriptions of being a, a very crude constructor, I think I'll be okay. Let's put this back in. That's our spring for the battery. That's what we want. And let's give us a little wiggle, give us a little shimmy. That's okay too. A little wiggle and a shimmy. You can't go wrong without a couple of those things. Pop our screw in. Ah, here we go. This is great, isn't it? It's nice to sort of... He says, remember, I am assuming this is the fix, of course, but it's nice to, to you know, think that you've maybe kept this thing going and it, it's going to be several decades old at this point. Now, we did find a broken thing. It'd be interesting to know what that broken thing was from, but if, we, if I spot that, I'll see if there's any chance of gluing it in. Let's get our switch back in and we'll get our, a knob of adjustment A. There we go, that's our adjustment knob back in there. Click, clack. I think that was pretty much all there was on there. Just a quick look at, just to see here if we can see what that broken clip was from. I'm telling, it's not really screaming out at me what it could have been. It's a sort of shape of one of those sorts of battery type clips, a little battery detent, but not to worry. Assembly is the reverse of disassembly. I have many uh, iPods and things that uh, seem not to follow the rule and uh, as such have remained disassembled. Permanent. Let's get our high frequency, high tension circuit in there. Yes, there we go. It's about as much as you can strain all these wires got to flip them over. All looks good, all looks good under the hood. Again, for some of these things though, you might be able to find where there's a composite signal. I'm gonna to have to set my scope to sort of video mode one day and just measure what a composite signal looks like and uh, then look for composite signals on boards like this and then inject one, see if it works. I think that's gonna be a future project for me got a lot of things like this knocking around that could benefit. Um, just going to push that in there. Yes! So if I just rest it now on its back, I'm going to plug its power supply back in and then we're just going to plug it in. Just test it's okay before we clip the final thing together. Uh -huh. Just trying to switch it on. I'm not sure I'm seeing it though. I missed something. Let's turn that off. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No LEDs. Nothing to tell me that it's coming on. So far, no, not good. <laughs> Just checking. Checking everything. We do have a brightness wheel. holding it in my hand just so I can adjust the brightnesses. Hmm. Maybe that wasn't the full problem here, the full issue. Just studying it briefly. 
I'm just saying in case there's basically it could be the possibility that it does need to be closed up because there's a bit of bonding or something going on between the two things. But there's another test we can do that's quite easy. We knew it was running off batteries. I can still try the old batteries out before I bolt it together. And then turn that on. Yeah, so it's still coming on with the batteries though. Hmm. So I think that's probably the first phase of a fix really. Dare I continue with a wafer, wafer thin investigation? Another wafer thin investigation. Uh, okay, yeah, let's let's do our wafer thin investigation. Um. <laughs> this is where things can go wrong now. It's getting a little bit complacent. Power is on. Volts are on, and I'm just going to sort of again do that same sort of probing I did last time. Even though we knew that these weren't necessarily the best places to probe, just want to see if there's any volts going anywhere. Turn it on, of course. I'm seeing 1.2 volts down there, so there are volts going across to there, and. 1.2 volts. So we are seeing 1.2 volts coming to there. So that's a good test. So what we can do then is just chuck in some batteries and just see if that gives us the same voltage. The logic being that if the uh, 5 volts, there we go. So yes, that's the problem. So we can see 1.2 volts when we attach PCB, our power supply, and then we see 1.5 um, volts when we attach the battery. So it implies there's something not right. So that does give us quite a lot to test with. So I'm just going to check real quick. And when I say real quick, I mean real quick. I don't want to, <laughs> I'm not going to sit and, and do a real detailed um, investigation of this right now. I've just don't have the time, but uh, I think it would be nice while we're here. Save us opening up again. When the lid's off, you know, just keep keep at it. Oh, that button! It really, they really like to sort of try to escape. There we go. Phew! Thank gosh, found that one. Remind me to leave that out now. <laughs> so the board is on. We'll take the button away from the board, and we're going to then put the scalpel in there again, put the battery off. You don't get this on other YouTube channels, do you? The whole actual pain of retrying, retesting, redoing everything. But uh, you do on here. The pain is real, I can assure you. I, either they don't do it because they're very lucky and it all just works first time for them. Oh. What, um, what, 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 what? Might be the power supply too. No, going mad here. Let's just check. I'm only seeing 1.7 volts. Hmm, hmm. Is there something fishy, fishy going on here? I'm just, I'm just looking at the other side of the board um, to see where, okay. So you see here, when you touch the battery, I say see here, like as if you can really see, that is the red wire from the battery goes to this track here, this trace here, yeah. And the negative of the battery looks here like it's just going to ground and I'm just gonna confirm that. with a buzzer. So let's put that contact there and try to, yeah. So it goes through this conditioning component here to ground. 
whereas the battery doesn't, which is interesting enough in itself. That's the bit we actually hooked up, if you recall. We, we hooked up the negative to there. Um, so the positive of the battery is coming through here, and I'm guessing there'll be contact between these two, yes. So when nothing's plugged in, the battery is going through this jack, and then the power is coming straight down here. So when we're plugging the jack in, which does have a bit of a corroded end, um, it's disabling the power from the battery, so the continuity between these two will be cut off. Yes, that's true, they are now. They are cut off. I do apologise if I've been off the bloody camera. Um, yeah, so the power now from the battery is being disconnected from this live. And then, if I'm, I've got my multimeter to the side, I'll tell you what the voltage is I'm reading. So if I read the two voltages, I'm only seeing 1.8 volts, though, coming out of the power supply. So which is really odd, which is sort of implying under load, the power supply itself is um, potentially failing. I mean, technically, meter here like technically whatever is that component for example you should be able to just sort of do that and it would um, you know bypass whatever that component is if it's like some sort of resistor or something if that is the case let's try to it's a bit tricky I admit to get my probes here and I'm going to tell you what voltages I'm seeing and I'm currently seeing 1.9 volts and then when I jump across this thing it's not making it oh, actually it drops down to 1.6 volts so that's odd so I think I think it might be the power supply so there's one final sanity check for uh, this whole power supply dealy and uh, I'll describe that while I sort of put this all together again and it could be that the power supply is failing, fine. So what one can do, without going through all of this pain again, is to just put a couple of wires on the end of the jack of the power supply into the battery bay. And if it works via that way, then you'll know there's some weird conditioning circuitry. But they, they can't be, we could, we could see that, that the battery power goes straight through the same path. So yeah, I suspect, you could have done it basically with the power supply out, do that thing and then prove if, it, if the power supply going through the battery bay doesn't work, then it's the power supply. We could have tested everything without opening this up. Whether or not the whole thing being broken has anything to do with it, I don't think so. I think that's just a, oh, how does this work? Let's just get this knob, knob end adjusted. I think it was just uh, a coincidence that the, the jack would have been loose. Okay, pop that in. Whew. Now we're cooking. Now we're cooking. Get that on. Get that on. That's a lot. There's a lot to fix in stuff, isn't there? You just, if you, if you want to just breeze through it and do a, a half ass diagnostic, you can. And if you really want to take a little bit more care. And you can go way deeper than this. This is just pretty, still pretty much surface mount level diagnostic. Now we've got three screws to put in and one of them was long. I'm gonna go, actually, let's see. Two shortish ones and one long one. That's gonna be tricky now for me to guess which was which. Should have paid more attention on the uh, removal. I'm gonna go with a short one in the battery bay though, because I think that's got the smallest bit of plastic there, but I could be wrong, of course. Damn it, wrong. Fine, not a problem though. Long screw in the battery bay, and the short screws in the other two, and it's, it's only got a little bit of bite, like it's only got a couple of mils worth of bite at the end of that all. get that case snapped on properly. A couple of short ones. C 
So I could open up the Casio power supply and it's a whole one amp and it does have regular screws, which is kind of cool. I suspect when we look inside the Casio power supply, it'll just be some dead caps. But what I would suggest if you're going to do this, my solution, and I'm not proposing I'm going to do that now, is I would gut it basically. It's a huge box, right? Why not take that huge box, empty it out, chuck away all the innards, you know, assuming it's not something obvious like a really leaky, bulgy cap. I mean, you could still decide. But then just put in a modern, nice little switching power supply. Is that actually... There we go. I think that... I wasn't sure if that was biting. And, uh, yeah, then you've just got modern internals and it all work. And you can test out the other power... Actually, I've probably... I thought I did it wrong, but, yeah. That screw is really tough because it's got a lot of... Um, forces to contend with because you can rotate that antenna as well as just extend it. There we go. Let's pop the batteries in again. One last sanity check of course. Yeah, it's on. Not very bright but I can't remember how bright they were back in the day. I thought they were actually quite decent but maybe maybe I'm thinking through those tinted Specsaver goggles. So that's the uh, Casio LCD um, <laughs> Pocket Colour Television TV 1400 all torn down and uh, kind of repaired, um, definitely repaired actually, I'm pretty sure the better power supply is going to make that work. So please uh, like, share, subscribe and share this with any any people you think would be find the video useful because I know some people out there need to keep these gadgets alive. Comments down below as ever. Thank you for watching.